Hello, hello. Welcome to Living Box Free. I'm Becky Ford. And I'm Ashleen Seitz. And today we have a super special guest. If you've listened to any of our podcasts, you have probably heard Ash and I drop the name Whoop multiple times. Uh, It's a fitness device that we both wear, and it is something that's helped us as we try to improve our health, both physical and mental. And today we have someone from Whoop with us to talk to us, and I can't I I just can't not say this. Whoop, there it is, right? Whoop, (laughs) there it is. We're going to talk to Lauren today. She's going to introduce herself in a second. And we're going to have her share with us the benefits of wearing a fitness watch and specifically some of the things that Whoop has learned that are healthy habits of people uh, who are striving to improve their overall health. But first, our question, Ash, what's on the rise for you this week? On the rise for me. Okay. I don't know how I forgot, but I somehow forgot how much I love the CrossFit Open. I forgot. I think because I had a little bit of a rough time last year because uh, we were on, we were all put on teams and I was trying to like amp up the competition, the friendly competition because I'm undefeated and our community (laughs) took that very seriously. And it was like death to Ashlane's team, which I uh, can understand, but it was a little much for me. So this year I was like, I'm out. I'm not doing it. Yeah, I don't feel fit. It's fine. But then I went today at the noon class and I was like, no, you know what? I love this. I'm going to sign up. So yeah. That's uh, where I'm at. <laughs> Lauren, just a little background. We do like a inside our CrossFit gym, we create fun teams, yes. team spirit. So you can't see us, fortunately. <laughs> I'm in my team spirit for later tonight, <laughs> USA theme. We dress up goofy. We have fun. And love it. Every, every year we've done it, Ash has been a team captain, except for this year. And every year she's won. And so every, so this year we did not ask her to be a team captain. We're giving her a break. Uh, she did great at noon. Uh, what's on the rise for me this week. I'm going to say challenge winners. We just Mm. finished our six week healthy challenge as a community. And we just announced today our winners. We do three winners empower. So who empowers people who, and it's peer voted effort, uh, who put in the most effort and then an evolve winner. So who changed physically the most, uh, and, yeah, just I absolutely love the conclusion of that because it's just cool to celebrate people's hard work. So that was that's to, that's what happened today. Super fun. That's awesome. Yeah, Lauren, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to be here. Good. We're excited to have you. What is on the rise for you this week? Hmm. Yeah, I would I would say so. Monday I went to my first concert. I think it was my first concert since COVID started. Um, I saw wow. John Mayer at Madison Square Garden, and oh my gosh, yeah, it was that's just quite so, a. Con- first concert back. I know yeah. he was he was incredible, um, and it was just like awesome to one see him perform live, but two just like be back in a concert and the energy the atmosphere was just so so awesome. So that was uh, my my highlight from this past week, and I hope to keep some of that good energy and good vibes going into this next week. That's great. Oh, my husband, if he ever listens to this episode, <laughs> he would be so jealous. <laughs> he loves John Mayer. It was so good. He's good. A well, Lauren, let's just start off. Tell our listeners who you are, what you do. And for those who don't know Whoop, tell us a little bit about Whoop as well. Sure. So um, my name is Lauren Zaranti, and I live in New York City, originally from the cold, windy city of Chicago. Um, but I work at Whoop as a strategic customer success manager. So um, I get the pleasure of working with organizations such as Elanco, which is you know, how we were introduced, Becky. Um, I am a former Division One athlete, so I, I love to work out. It's a big part of my life still. Um, when I'm not working out and working, you can find me checking out, you know, new restaurants in New York City. There's so many good ones to choose from. But yeah, my experience with Whoop and my background is that I had um, worn Whoop as a consumer about two years ago. I started to wear Whoop. I had dabbled in other fitness trackers. I used to wear the Polar HR chest strap, which I can't believe I did that. Like just thinking about how uncomfortable it was. But yes tried out um, all the different things and initially was introduced to Whoop, um, started to wear it, started to love it, um, closely followed the company, you know, listened to all of their podcasts and um, loved the, you know, the way that they were innovating and had seen that the the company was starting to expand their business and started to work more with uh, enterprises and businesses. So I thought, you know, there's no better marriage of, of my background with customer success and technology and also a product that I love and I'm super 
passionate about. So, um, so yeah, that kind of led me to the organization and, and the role I'm in today. And I feel super fortunate to just be surrounded by so many like-minded, um, really innovative people. And that's a little bit about myself. That's so cool. I, no joke. I just threw away. I found that polar thing that went around your <laughs> underneath your sports bra. I just found it this week and I threw it away. So I know exactly. RIP. Yeah. <laughs> probably, probably could have sold that on eBay, Becky. Come on. Yeah. I remember doing CrossFit <laughs> with that and I would like do a jerk and it would slide down. I'm like, this isn't good. <laughs> yeah. Get all sweaty uh, and oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, tell us, uh, tell us why you, okay. You did tell us why you decided to work at Whoop. It sounds like it aligns with your passions uh, very well. So that's super cool that you've got a job you're passionate about. Uh, real quick, um, we had a question. So I wanted to address, we asked on social media, what questions do you have for Whoop? And a lot of people are just like, give me a free Whoop, which wasn't a question. <laughs> um, maybe someday. Uh, but no, one of the questions we got, we have a lot of listeners who are women. So I want to make sure we answered this question early on. Someone asked about um, Whoop and partnering with researchers to help track menstruation and the impact that has on our health. So um, I want to make sure we answer that listener question and all the other listeners who asked for free whoops, um, you're just gonna have to, you're just gonna have to wait. I guess <laughs> that's not a question, <laughs> but well, I guess it is a question. So yeah, so tell us about the women health side and Whoop. Yeah. So first, I should have uh, better explained what Whoop is for those that maybe aren't familiar. But Whoop uh, is yes. um, we're we're on a mission to help individuals, teams, organizations reach their fullest potential and unlock their human performance. And we really do this through advanced wearable technology um, that collects all of this biometric data twenty four seven, and then provides uh, the Whoop user personalized coaching and insights to really help them action their data in the most meaningful way, meaningful way possible. So that's a little bit of background on Whoop if you're not familiar. Um, but part of that biometric data and that coaching has helped us develop interesting features such as menstrual coaching, which is a newer feature of Whoop. Um, and what we found was just that women have historically been really underrepresented in sports science and research. Um, so Whoop started to study the relationship between things like menstrual cycle and birth control and how that affects our sleep and recovery. Um, so super excited about that initiative. We've partnered with um, female physiology and nutrition experts, Dr. Stacey Sims, which Highly recommend her as a, a resource for those that are interested in learning more about this. I have her book, Roar, in my background. Um, really interesting. But um, but yeah, I would say for those interested in you know learning more about that relationship, check out the menstrual coaching feature in the app. We do work with um, experts like Stacey Sims to you know develop this coaching. And then on top of the the coaching, we also have set up a women's performance collective, which is a a group of thought leaderships, uh, thought leaders, excuse me, academic experts and athletes. Um, and essentially this women's performance collective is going to help us continue to expand on the research that we're looking to do to uncover um, basically female performance and, and physiology. So yeah, it's very exciting. And I'm excited that we're starting to do more research on women because we should no longer be underrepresented there. <laughs> yeah. You guys had a really good podcast. I can't remember if I sent it to you, Ash. It was a few months back, but it was about like birth control and how that impacts your peak performance based mm -hmm. on what you're taking, all that type of stuff. So, and I, I mean, I've really appreciated some of the podcast education as well. You guys are providing on that female physiology side. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. A lot of stuff that you just don't learn a lot about un unless you kind of seek that research. So, yeah. Uh, I know I was just like jumping straight in, but uh, <laughs> thank you for like Love it. rewind. What's Whoop's mission? You talked about that. Um, when it comes to Whoop, I know it's different than other fitness trackers out there. And you guys have some core pillars that you use to track things. So tell us a little bit about those core measurements that you use uh, to track that people who wear a Whoop would find in their app. Yeah. So the three uh, core pillars of Whoop are sleep, recovery, and strain. Um, so sleep, it's of course the foundation for everything that we do. Um, we all know that we need to sleep more. It affects all aspects of our lives. But what Whoop does is, is it helps you understand, you know, really deeply how you are sleeping, what stages of sleep you're in, how long you're spending in each. And then it also, you know, so it assesses the quality of your sleep and then it also provides you that coaching. So it's going to tell you based off of all of these different demographic and physiological factors, 
when you should actually get in bed and when you should wake up in order to be to wake up the next morning ready to go, ready to perform. Um, so that's pillar number one. And we'll talk more about that, I'm sure, throughout the rest of the podcast. Um, pillar number two is recovery. And this is essentially a gauge of how much gas you have in the tank for your day. Um, so this has been really powerful for someone like me who yeah, I'm pretty routine. I, I, I find it in like natural to wake up in the morning and want to get my workout in. And the recovery aspect has, has really helped me sort of know when I need to pull back and when I can go hard. Um, and I think for people that, you know, maybe fall into that trap of overtraining or, or burnout recovery is a super important metric to look at. And one of the key inputs to that is heart rate variability, which those that wear whoop, um, probably, are familiar with it, but weren't before, like we talked about, Becky. Um, HRV is a gauge of the balance in our autonomic nervous system. So to put that in simple terms, we have our fight or flight branch and then our rest and digest branch. And we want to have balance between those two branches. Um, And basically, you know, HRV, essentially, when we take on a lot of stress, we lose that balance and our fight or flight branch takes over. So um, HRV is a really powerful input to that recovery score that we get. And that's very interesting to see that data in the WHOOP app. And then um, the last pillar is strain, and that's a measure of cardiovascular load. So essentially, it's the stress we place on our bodies physically and mentally. Um, I think it's interesting to because it helps us measure how we're managing and taking on stress, which can be really hard uh, to do without objective data. So very interesting to look at strain, especially as it relates to your recovery score. So you always kind of want to balance the two. Days you wake up with a, a high recovery score, you're re- you're more ready to take on strain versus the inverse. If you wake up and your body's not so recovered, you want to be mindful to not take on a ton of strain that day because you know you can lead to that can lead to injury, burnout, etc. So those are the three pillars, and that's kind of the foundation for all of the data in the Whoop app. I feel like if we had time, I would make you give Becky a lecture on why she should take rest days <laughs> <laughs> and not overtrain. I don't know if I'm the person to give that, but uh, <laughs> I've certainly gotten a little better about it. <laughs> what was your sport, Lauren? I, have, have an I played volleyball in college. Okay. Yeah, okay. Awesome. a little bit. Re- I would say I'm retired now, but <laughs> yeah, very cool. Lauren, Sorry, that was just you know thinking about the rest days and uh, like no overtraining, but yeah. <laughs> I have taken two rest days this month, Ash. This month, which is also <laughs> this year, right? <laughs> no, no. I took one in January, three total. Okay, so three total <laughs> yeah. this year. Awesome. You're awesome. Great, Becky. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren and I can start a support group, people who don't like to rest. <laughs> <laughs> people who can't sit still. Can't yeah, exactly. Couch. Exactly. Uh, I... HRV that really stood out to me is something I had never heard of until Whoop. Mm-hmm. And like you said... Um, when we ask ourselves, like, how do we know, like, what are those key measurements for health? And HRV was a new one. And uh, so I thank you for describing that. Uh, And I know it's something I've seen some athletes out there, Amanda Barnhart had a really great post about her HRV and just like, it's very personal, right? So everyone's is very different. And she was posting about caffeine and her learning the impact that has had on her HRV. Um, So yeah, it's just, it's so interesting, like, truly learning things about your body that you just you never even knew and seeing that difference um, through your recovery. I don't remember when it came out, but there was a blog post from Whoop at some point of how to improve your HRV. Mm-hmm. And it was like bullet points of the things that you can do. And I literally went down the list and I was like, oh, Becky does that. Oh, Becky does that. Oh, oh, yep. Becky does. Becky practices gratitude. Becky doesn't drink caffeine. Okay. Well, this makes sense. Why hers is three times mine. I understand now. I haven't seen this list. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's basically describing your life. So okay, you need cool. to see it. Cool. Uh, well, Lauren, we will stop talking about me and my non-rest days. <laughs> uh, let's, let's talk about wellness and like going beyond the physical too. Let's talk about, you know, what are some of the things that you guys have discovered at Whoop from an overall wellness feature that helps helps people with their recovery and overall health? And I know, I know the journal feature, I mean, Ash just said expressing gratitude, like I can track that in my journal. Um, so not sure if you guys have seen like what some of those top habits are of people who have good recoveries, good overall health as you guys define it. Yeah, we we have taken a look at this data. So Whoop did a, a year in review for 2021 and took a look at uh, all of the journal kind of recordings across our, our member base and, and had some really interesting findings. So in terms of what we've seen to impact recovery, um, hydration, 
things that probably, you know, won't surprise you, but also just important to know. So hydration, um, taking turmeric, dairy-free diet, paleo diet, vegan diet, um, spending time outdoors. Those are some of the, the kind of key findings in terms of what can impact um, next day recovery. And I think similarly to that, we also looked at what improves sleep efficiency. And some of those things that you mentioned, Becky, that the journal tracks, like feeling control, feeling efficacy, feeling purpose. Those were um, some of the top habits that improve sleep efficiency, along with hydration, um, massage therapy, reading in bed, and sleeping in your own bed. So those are some of the the key findings that I can remember from our, our year in review that we did. Um, but yeah, I think all things, like you say, like physical and, and habits, like staying hydrated, but also more of the mental um, well-being things that are important to think about too, like gratitude and purpose and feeling control. The diet one, I think super interesting. And I wonder... I wonder if like, cause you mentioned multiple different diets there. I wonder if those individuals is just being like conscious about how you're fueling yourself. Yeah, I think so. And I remember hearing our, our VP of data science talk about that and on the podcast where they went through those findings. And I think she had touched on that, that that could be a factor. And it's just, just the consistency of those that maybe kind of classify themselves as, you know, being on that certain type of diet, it could be uh, a key factor. But, but yeah, the journal is really interesting. I think um, there are some of those habits I just listed that are you know pretty standard across the board will likely help you improve recovery and sleep. But I think the journal also can be pretty powerful because it's, it tells you what's going to help you individually and, and you personally. So like some things for me, like blue light glasses, I've, I've found have improved my sleep and recovery but I know for some colleagues, they haven't seen the same correlation. So that's also, I would say, another great part of WHOOP is just like the, the super personalized insights and coaching you get. Yeah. Yeah. I know for me, reading in bed is like a, a huge game changer in recovery. And yet I still can't get myself to do it. So I don't know if you have any insights <laughs> there. You want to coach me on that? No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, so it, I agree. The personal insights on that is fascinating. Definitely. So, so you're saying it helps your recovery when you read in bed? Yes. If I read an actual mm -hmm. book, in bed, it helps my recovery greatly. That's cool. Me too. All right. I'm going to start reading in bed tonight. <laughs> I, do it like, I do it like once a month. So, <laughs> uh, but the data, the data shows Have really great recovery the next day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about habits over the pandemic. And I know uh, you guys have done a few podcasts and stuff about data from the pandemic and um, curious, like what were some of those habits that you guys saw change throughout 2020 and 2021 that maybe positively or negatively impacted people's health? Yeah, great question. We whooped did a lot of really interesting research around COVID-19. I, I can think of one study that we did in 2020 um, that showed sort of the impact of, of how social distancing affect things like our sleep and recovery. And, and the study actually showed that um, WHOOP users got more sleep and they exercised more and had lower heart rate and higher HR or lower resting heart rate and higher HRV, um, which makes sense given, I think, the decrease in commuting time and the influx of work from home. Um, so that was really interesting, but I think, you know, at the same time, there was absolutely no doubt that stress was also at an all time high with all of the you know unknown and uncertainty, uncertainty that we were all facing. Um, I think for me personally, I, the pandemic really made me take a step back and rethink sort of how I cannot take my health for granted. And as a, as an individual, I was really craving like any data um, or insight I could get into my body just because there was so much of that unknown. So it was really nice for me to be able to lean on whoop in that time to, to give me that like rich understanding of my body. And, you know, there are certain things that um, I could think of like we, whoop has a health monitor that we released uh, around the pandemic, I think. And this essentially shows like key vitals and metrics, and it's going to notify you if anything is outside of your baseline. So um, we did interesting research on how respiratory rate and COVID-19 are um, related to each other. And myself and a lot of other WHOOP users um, saw spikes in their respiratory rate and were given sort of, you know, strong signs that they could have COVID. So um, yeah, I think it, you know, we saw some of the the, the data from the, from the studies we've done showing that people were sleeping more um, and exercising more. And then we also saw that people, I think, just wanted to take more control over their health and really tune in to some of those um, important metrics such as respiratory rate and, and HRV and heart rate. Yeah, that's great. I know um, 
<laughs> I know that we had some epic track workouts over the pandemic when gyms were closed. Um, <laughs> Ash, Ash kicked my butt a couple times. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but to your point, it is, it is cool. I guess the audience of the whoop users, you know, caring about their health, it's cool to see that actually over the pandemic you saw, they increased their exercise and their resting heart rate decrease. That's amazing. That is super Definitely. cool. Um, when it comes to wearing a fitness device for anyone out there who doesn't have a whoop, or maybe they don't, they're just like anti wearing anything. Why would, why would you tell them that this is beneficial for them? What would be some of those pieces of value it can add to their life? Yeah, I think it's really important to, you know, stay super in tune with our bodies. And I've always considered myself to be very in tune with myself and, and, and like to think that I know myself well, but I will say there's just something about being able to use objective data to like empower decisions and choices. Um, I feel like it's like my superpower having my whoop. And I think that sounds kind of cheesy, but it really, it allows me to ultimately like, you know, make, like I said, informed decisions and show up in the best way possible for myself and the ones around me. So that would be, you know, my personal experience of why I think a wearable like whoop is, is going to add value to your life. And if you listen to the whoop podcast, I mean, you'll hear our CEO will a lot, uh, he'll say a lot that whoop helps you uncover the secrets that your body is trying to tell you. Um, and I think that's just super true. Um, whoops, like an accountability tracker, a coach, a friend, all in one. And, you know, there's a competitive aspect. I know you all are on some teams as well. So you can compete with not only others, but I know that I personally find myself competing with myself on whoop. I'm always like, <laughs> um, you know, looking back at like last year, how I was recovering, what my HRV was around the same time. So I think all of those aspects really, you know, make whoop a powerful tool and behavior change as well. I know when you talk about competing with yourself, I like to look at my average strain and I'm like, dang it, it went down this week. <laughs> I took a rest day. I have done that. Um, can you real quick explain what strain is exactly and why we you guys measure strain and not steps, uh, for example? Yeah, yeah. Common question. So like I said earlier, strain is a measure of cardiovascular load. So it's measured on a scale of zero to 21. Um, and essentially, I think why, you know, Whoop decided to measure strain over uh, something like steps is just the the better holistic picture that a metric like strain can capture. Um, for instance, if I walk a thousand steps in my apartment and Becky, you walk a thousand steps on a hike, we're actually going to be working a lot. Uh, there's going to be quite a bit of variance in the amount of exertion and work that we're doing across those two two workouts. Um, and so I think that's where you know strain would better better capture that information over over steps. Um, also, you know, there are activities such as swimming or um, working on an elliptical or even like there's activities in the whoop app such as like manual labor or high stress work where it's not necessarily maybe you're not doing steps um in those cases but your your heart rate is is uh, you know exceed exceeding its normal amount and you're exerting strain so um i would say those are some of the key reasons why you know whoop has decided that this was a powerful metric to um to track over something like steps that's great uh if we could summarize your top three recommendations for people to improve their overall health, both physically, mentally, emotionally, what would your top three recommendations be based on what you know from WHOOP? Yeah, this is a tough question. I think I'll start with maybe three bigger picture tips and then three more detailed. I would say bigger picture is sleep more and improve the quality of your sleep. Um, we all know this is important and I've already talked about it a lot in this podcast, but um, working at WHOOP and, and using WHOOP for over two years, I think has really just hammered this home for me. But when we become sleep deprived, like we lose our capacity to even think long term. So think about how that affects our decision making process. I mean, we've all been there where we've reached for the bag of chips or um, candy because we're just sleep deprived and it's the easy choice. So I think, you know, when our bodies run on low power mode, it's really hard to improve our health and, and focus on improving some of those habits that we talked about. So focus on sleep, improve the quality of your sleep, number one. Number two, I would say is is track and measure things so that you can manage them. Um, we say a lot at Whoop, and we're obviously very big on data, but um, you say that you can't manage what you don't measure, and I think that's that's super true. So that would be my second tip. Number three would be just be patient. Um, I think 
even, you know, thinking about when I first started off on my WHOOP journey, I was expecting to see a lot of changes, like you say, Ash, in your HRV, and why haven't I <laughs> seen my resting heart rate decrease in a month? But I think it's just all, you know, it's, a, it's powerful to reiterate that change takes time and um, consistency and sticking with it, you'll start to see those, those changes. And then more specifically, we talked about already, but hydrate, um, anchor meal times and cut off late meals and alcohol and caffeine consumption. Those can be killers for your recovery score and, and getting proper sleep that night. And then hmm, number three tip on that would be just sunlight and light exposure. Um, so light in the morning, light midday, and then watching the sky transition from day to night. I think those are some of the quick kind of quick tips I would give hmm. to focus on in a, on a daily basis. I thought that last one's fascinating. That's not something I had thought about. Yeah. Same, same thing, same here. I mean, that was something that I learned a lot after kind of starting at Whoop is how important that is to aligning circadian rhythm. And it really like all of those things send cues to our body that it's time to go to bed, yeah. it's time to wake up and be alert. So super interesting okay. um, to see the effect that has. Yeah, that makes sense. Huh, cool. All right. We have two more questions. One, all right. I know a lot of people I know are resistant to getting a wearable for usually two reasons. One, they don't want to know, which you kind of answered that with the you can't uh, can't fix or you can't control what you can't measure um, or they're you know, it's too expensive. So what would you say? What would you say to someone who gives you either of those responses? Yeah, number one, I think. um is to use the data to empower you. I mean, it can be overwhelming to get a lot of data and it can be easy to also be hard on yourself if you wake up with a, a poor recovery score or you didn't get enough sleep last night. But I think it's just, you know, doing the best with what you can, focusing on what you can control. Um, you know, sometimes Whoop will give you some pretty strong recommendations on how much sleep you need to get in the night. And maybe you can't get 100% of that and that's okay. Um, so I think it's just doing the best you can and thinking about maybe, you know, small ways that you can chip away at a, at a habit or a recommendation like that. Um, that would be my my response to, to the first part. And the second part is, I think, you know, you your, your podcast is focused a lot on wellness. And what that means to me is just, you know, finding balance in all aspects of, of what wellness is, which is so many different, you know, areas and focuses, but investing in your health. And uh, I know, I think that's one way that, you know, you can do that is investing in a, a wearable that is going to really help you reach your fullest potential. So I would say, yes, it is an, an investment, but it's one that's well worth it. So. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, I, it's cheesy, but I consistently think of that um, saying of, if you don't invest in your wellness, you'll be forced to invest in your illness. So yeah. that's the thing that comes back to me when I think about that, but yeah. Okay. So, so final question for you. Well, I mean, we probably could go on all day, let's be honest. <laughs> but final question for this this session. Um, where can people learn more if they want to know more about Whoop? What, where can they find it, that information? Yeah, I would say best place is whoop.com. Um, and you can check out there our products, our um, great podcasts that we have a variety of guests and topics that we cover. We talked about a couple today. Um, our our blog um, and content on the locker is also can be found on the whoop.com website. Mm -hmm. So I would say start there. And then if you're um, interested in podcasts, which I might imagine you are, if you're listening <laughs> to this, definitely check out the whoop podcast. If you're here. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. It's been really cool to hear more in depth, some of the behind the scenes stuff and hear some, I mean, I learned a bunch just talking to you for half an hour. So thank you for talking this through. I, I feel like, yeah, I mean, my common phrase is reality is your friend and any wearable that gives you data on what you're doing and how you're living your life is showing you reality. And then you can learn to manage it and figure out how to make it your ally and move forward and grow. So, so true. Yeah. Make it I your love, superpower. <laughs> yes, yes. I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It's been absolutely. It's been super fun. Thank you for joining us and Fox breakers. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.